All right, hey, what's up guys? Gratuitous here. In this tutorial, I'm gonna teach you how to use multi-link to controllers. It's a quick way to assign multiple knobs, or multiple sliders to a VST or anything in FL Studio. It's really, really easy to set up. Also, just wanna give a quick shout out to Asher. He sent me this hat. He's a, he was a student of mine. Thank you so much. And uh, let's get into the tutorial. Before getting into the video, if you guys would like to learn FL Studio, check out my free book called Five Keys to a Successful Beat, So Simple It Becomes Creative. Get it by going to itsgratuitous.com forward slash five keys. All right, so in short, multi-link to controllers is this button right here. You simply just click it. You can move however many knobs as you want and look right beside multi-link to controllers right now. So if you look there right now, you can see sample uh, channel volume went, sample channel panning went, if we opened up uh, the sampler, not everything can be automated. For example, if we move like sample start, you can see that it is not registered or it's not like lined up in the queue. We click uh, the envelope settings here. So you can see that we can actually, if you look up here again, now we can adjust like the attack. So pretty much most things can be um, automated. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click this and I'm gonna get rid of it. I'm gonna show you how to do this, like how it, how it all works, okay? So once you move all those parameters, you can actually right click it. And then this is how you can go link to controller, which is a project link, or you can go override global link, which is a global link. If you want to learn more about that, check out my project links and global links tutorial, but we'll cover just a little bit in this video. Okay, so let me just load up a VST here. Let's say that we want to get hands on with, let's say flex. Let's say we want to adjust these sliders. And again, this is, um, by using multi-link to controllers, you can use it for both stock plugins and third-party plugins, which makes it really powerful because if you just want to right-click on a knob, as you can see, there's this, right? This allows you to assign one knob nice and quick, but sometimes you're not able to right-click in a third-party plugin. And so this is where you can just click the multi-link to controllers. You move it, you move it, you move it and you move it, and then what would happen is on your actual MIDI keyboard, if you want to assign that, you can simply just move a knob or a slider and you just gotta go in order, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, but the best way to do it is to really right click, and then you, as the user, get to decide, am I using a project link or a global link? A project link is only for this particular project, a global link is if you want to set up these knobs and sliders to be used in old projects and new projects to get hands on, all right? Usually you will probably want to be using global links if you want to get hands on on this virtual instrument for the long term. Um, but if you want to do something special just for this particular project, that's where you'd probably want to look into a link to controller. Again, check out the other tutorial on that. Now, before going further, I just want to let you know that when it comes to the global links, when you map the knobs, because it is a permanent link and it's remembered, um, this is where FL Studio stores the permanent mappings. So for example, if you set it all up and you, um, if things get really messy, you can simply just delete this file and you can start fresh. Or if you want to transfer to a new computer, I highly suggest backing this up. So me personally, I back this up if I ever um, upgrade it to a new computer. I have all my mappings based off of my Oxygen Pro, okay? So again, this is the M Audio Oxygen Pro. And you find this in Documents, Image Line, FL Studio, Settings, Mapping, Generic, Local, and then you get this file, okay? It is an XML format. It's just like a, um, a coding language. So you can always fix things if, if you want. You can, you can go in there and custom change it. But what I'm gonna do, just for my own um, backup purposes, I'm just going to copy this to my desktop. And this way, I can set up global links with you and then I can simply just delete this and then I can get back after I'm done this tutorial. So let's say, again, we are in flex. So let's get rid of what we've mapped and let's just load up. Let's just say one of these ones, I'll hit some keys. Um, so first of all, it's not playing. Uh, it is clicked. Let's hit F10. It is enabled. So we should be able to see the notes and we're not hearing anything. So we'll go to the audio tab. Okay, so see, sometimes things are just buggy, but in this case, I uh, went to my audio tab, opened up the FL Studio ASIO, and now, <laughs> now the keys worked. And that was weird because FL Studio recognized the MIDI keyboard. Okay, I'll, I'll leave this in here just so that you guys can kind of see how to debug and as you go along. So here is, let's say flex. Let's say we want to do filter, vibrato, and the filter sweep. So if I move these, uh, you can see that they are not assigned. So um, let's just move like this slider right here. 
So again, in the top left of FL Studio, if it's green, that means that it's not assigned. If I quickly just right, um, right click this and go link to controller and move this, you can see that it is now orange. This is a project link. And if we right click this one and we go override global link, and if we move it, or move another slider, you can see that it's blue, okay? So a project link is orange, a global link is blue, and if it's unassigned, it is green, all right? So how to use multi-link to controllers? Again, this works for both a stock plugin and a third-party plugin, which is really, really awesome because you simply just click this, you move it. If you just wanna do a project link, you can just simply just move a slider and you're done, okay? But sometimes you wanna think ahead, you know, is this just for this project? Well, then just use a project link. If you want to set up hands-on for multiple projects, then you want to be using global links. So in this case, if I right-click this, you can see this is mapped to a link controller and a global link. So I'll left-click this. A project link, you are presented with the remote control settings. And I will just reset this and hit accept. That is how we remove a link. I will right-click this one and go over a global link. And uh, now, in a global link, it is a global link settings. And there's a few couple differences, which we'll look at in just a moment. Reset. And so now this one, if we right click it, you can see it's not linked to anything. Whereas if we go to the vibrato override global link, let's just reset that, go accept. And I had this one mapped up. And from a previous tutorial I did with you guys. So right now, if I move anything, uh, nothing's working, okay? So to set up the multi-link to controllers, you simply just click the knob, and then it, it, again, look in the top left of FL Studio. So it says, please tweak the controls you want to link. It's pretty straightforward, right? So all we do is we're going to come here and we're just going to move filter, vibrato, and filter sweep. Now the question you should be asking yourself is, do I want to do project links or global links? If we were to move a slider right now, that is a project link. Or you can come up here, you can right click, and now you have link to controllers, project link, or global link. All right, so if we go link to controllers, you can see that there has a feature down here uh, called remove conflicts. And this is how you can set up one knob to control multiple parameters. For example, if we just want one slider to control the filter and the vibrato, then what you would do is let's say we click this one and we're gonna go filter and then vibrato. And I'll make a separate video on this, but just to share because a lot of people ask this question. Um, so watch, we're gonna right click. Let's just say we go link to controllers for this one. So I'm just going to move a slider, all right? And as you can see, now it's on two of two. So we can remove conflicts and I can move that slider again. And uh, even if it's not working, so watch, we're gonna go back to one and it put it to 255 on channel nine and we'll do the same thing here. And then we can actually manually put this to nine and then I'll put this to 255, which we can get there pretty fast. So I'm almost there, so 255. And see now it says remove conflicts is red, but I have it disabled. And if I go accept, you can see that this one knob, this one slider does two. All right. So it's pretty straightforward. You are not able to set up one slider to multiple parameters with global links. If you want to get around that, you can open up patcher and you can, uh, or uh, sorry, uh, the surface controller. So let's come here and, um, or sorry, I think it's called Control Surface. So in Installed, Plugin Database Installed, Effects. Um, again, so Installed is where we pull plugins from if we haven't organized them. As you can see, I have all my plugins organized. If you want to learn more about how to organize your plugins, you can also check out my Plugin Database Organization tutorial. And uh, that's, helped me, that's helped me out a lot. For example, if I right click, go insert, you know, look how organized my instruments are. These are the only instruments I use, so I don't need to be looking at tons of other ones. Makes it fast for tutorials, for courses, and even for myself. Same with samplers, so very, very quick. Same thing if I come down here to my effects for um, for mixing. So look, delays, this is all I use, right? Distortions, you know, compression. I, I just use what I use. I, there's no need to have a huge list. All right, so installed is what we pull from. So I was talking to you about the control surface. So here we're gonna go to Fruity. And you can see control surface right here. So you can add this into the mixer. Let's say we go to like, let's say uh, insert eight here. Okay. And then this, this gets uh, brought up, the control surface. And um, then you can create like a knob. So we're going to go like knob. Let's go like, and you can just uh, right click these and you can change like the style. And you can also right click on it to keep the window open. 
I usually always like to select um, a knob that has a visual um, place, whereas like you can actually see it. So if we get rid of this, you can see that you can do this and uh, we can make it maybe a little bigger. The super nice thing with FL Studio is, is all like vec vectoral. So it all looks like pretty fresh, no matter the size of stuff. And so if we want to set up a global link to multiple parameters, you can just right click this, you make this a global link, and then this becomes what's called an internal controller. And if we come back to here, you can right click, go link to controller, you can see internal controller right here. You can see that that knob that we just created, so for the filter, um, so this filter, right click, link to controller. So when we do a project link, this can be set up um, like, you know, you, you will have the internal controller section and you can set up a knob. Okay, so let's just get back to the simple how to use multi-link to controllers, okay? So you can just click it, you just move whatever sliders you want or, you know, any parameters, you can see they get added up here. Now they're in a queue. If you want to just simply set up knobs and sliders, you can just move a slider. So watch this, move it, it pops up, but you can see it's on two of three. That means that we have already assigned one knob, the first slider. Come to the next one, there's that, and then we come to the next one. Okay, so you can see I have a filter, but again, look in the top left, it is orange, which means it's only for this project. Okay, all right, so one last thing I just wanna say is, you know, when it comes to different plugins, like for example, I've, sh I've shared this in previous tutorials, but you can see I can get hands on really, really nice in FL Studio, so you guys can see the knobs here. So when it comes to fab filter plugins, I really like using fab filter plugins a lot. Um, whenever you are learning with me, you don't need the plugins. I don't ever kind of leave you hanging in a sense that, oh, well, you need that feature. I just like the tools, one, because they're easy to use. They're really visual and they're awesome for you to learn off of because you can see so good. All right, but you can see what I'm trying to say in this tutorial about mapping multiple parameters because this is a third party plugin. Um, one sec, like for example, let's say we go to Nexus, and if we right click a knob, you can see that we, we are not able to right click. This is what it's doing. Whereas in some third party plugins, like this is a this is a fab filter, watch, we can right click and we can assign. So we actually get this window if you just want to assign one knob, but the best way, because then you don't have to right click, you can just again, go multi-link to controllers. Even if you just want to map one knob or one parameter, then you can simply move it. It gets added up there. Then you can simply just move a slider um, or just right click and then you can access either a project link or a global link, okay? But just quickly, I just want to share like, look, if I open up Fab Filter, look in the top left, it, I have a blue, okay? So it's a blue knob, which means it is a global link, all right? You can see I've maxed it out to go to here and I've brought it up to here for, so this is the maximum and this is the minimum. And usually when I'm mixing my music, I usually find that I'm always in the sweet spot. So if the knob go, is too sensitive, then it's kind of hard to fine tune it. And this allows me to fine tune it. And again, if I right click go override global link, you can see that I have also done stuff to like the mapping formula. Again, I've mentioned this a couple of times. If you want to learn to set up hands-on mixing and learn about the mapping formula and global links and really getting a hands-on mixing experience in FL Studio, check out hands-on mixing in FL Studio. Or if you're a member, you get access to all the courses, okay? Um, but yeah, so if you know, I have my knobs set up. I also have sliders set up. You can see that my my master gain or like my, my output gain on this uh, compressor is working. I also have off and on because when you are compressing music, it's very important to be able to turn it off and on quickly to be able to hear before and after. And also I can quickly level match. So you can see that I can, like, this would be like kind of like my workflow. So if you look more at the plugin, not so much my hand, you know, if I was, um, let me just load up a project. All right, here's a super rough track I've been working on. I just worked on it just the other night there. And um, so you can hear, um, here is Fab Filter Pro C. Okay, if I hit play. So watch, you can see I can quickly um, compress, you know, obviously gonna be aggressive just for right now. And we can turn off the compression. I can adjust my output volume this fast. Like this is how fast the hands-on workflow is. Okay, I can do like my attack, maybe too much, right? Turn it off, get it loud, get it loud. So without it, with it, 
sounds more even, a little smoother. It's being uh, brought back a little hard. So watch, my ratio, I'm bringing it back right here. And it's blue. All right, and so I have essentially set up my MIDI keyboard because FabFilter Pro C2 in this case is a very advanced compressor. And so I'm able to uh, go through the different styles of compression with my slider, okay? Um, I'm able to turn off and on the auto release right from the MIDI keyboard slider. Uh, the look ahead, I can enable it and disable it. I can also move the look ahead knob, okay? So for example, I can turn off look ahead. I can still adjust it. Um, you can't see my right hand, sorry, it's just on the camera. But you can just see that this is the hands-on workflow. And if you can set up a MIDI keyboard to suit your workflow, um, you can get awesome hands-on mixing without the need of motorized faders. Um, and that is essentially how I set up, let's say like a plugin, and that's how you use multi-link to controllers. So you simply just click it, you can move the parameters you want to add in. The next question you should be thinking to yourself is, is, this a, is it a project link or is it a global link? If it's a project link, it's only for this project. In this case, you can simply just move a knob and or, or a slider or whatever, and it will work. So you can see this um, this slider is moving this knob, this slider is moving this knob. Um, but if you want it to be more customized, you can also just right click it, go link to controller. You can fine tune the mapping. Um, I usually like to enable like the smoothing and stuff like that. Uh, it just makes it look, just a look a little, look a little bit better on the screen. Or even if you want to remove multiple parameters, you can also click here and you can do this and do this. And then again, just right click up here, go link to controllers. This will pop up. And again, to remove a parameter, you can just reset it. Um, I'll go accept. It's going to put me to, to two of two. So again, you can click here. Those are the two that I set up with you just quickly there. And then again, you can reset it right here. So now those, you know, nothing will work, which means it's green. All right, so if you guys got any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. If you guys would like to learn FL Studio and how to make beats better, check out my website, itsgratuitous.com. There is over 30 FL Studio courses on there. It's not just for FL Studio users. I get that question a lot from you guys. Sometimes you ask, hey, I use Pro Tools or hey, I use this DAW. The way how I teach is it applies to any music program because I'm teaching you guys like how to make beats. Yes, we use FL Studio. Some things will be just for FL Studio, but for the most part, as you can see, like I use third-party plugins and stuff. Um, you don't need the third-party plugins because just how I teach is just understanding how does a beat get made. It doesn't matter what music program you use. You can use FL Studio, another music program, but you have to understand that when it comes to making a beat, we have our melodies. Do you understand music theory? Do you understand how to play the piano, right? Like you can learn all that stuff in the platform. That is not FL Studio specific. That is a beat maker. Every beat maker has to learn some music, the some music theory, some drum loops. Um, okay, so that's it. Check out the website, itsgratuitous.com. You can also grab the free book by going to itsgratuitous.com forward slash five keys. A lot of good secrets in there that I've learned over the years of making beats. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Thanks for checking it out. I hope this helps you learn multi-link to controllers in FL Studio.